This is Fred Beck from Fred Talks Fighting. Today, I'm very lucky to be joined by John Rawling. So thank you very much for coming on, John. It's good to see you, mate. No problem. My, my, my pleasure. So, John, before we talk about what happened at the weekend and a bit about BG Sport, I just want to go back in time a bit and go to when you're a commentator for the BBC and when you're commenting the Olympic Games from 1992 to 2004, and then you also commentated at football for ITV. But how did you originally get into commentating from the start? I always wanted to be a professional sportsman, uh, but unfortunately the old physical attributes were never quite up to it. Uh, and I went into it through, uh, through journalism originally when I, uh, when I left university, uh, then local radio, then I worked for national radio. And then, uh, you know, having worked in that, I, I, got into, I got into commentating. And really, I think if you can't quite make it as a sportsman, uh, it's probably about the next best thing. And nowadays, well, I sure want to know this, right? Do you think, say you want to be an interviewer or commentator, say you finish college or sixth form, do you think the best thing is to go to university nowadays? You want to kind of pursue that sort of thing? Yeah, I think you've got to. I think even more so than in, uh, than in my day, you know, you've got to get the, uh, get the broadcast credentials behind you. And to be quite honest, if I was advising anybody going, you know, to wanting to make a career in media, I think the most important thing is to get yourself onto a course and learn all the production techniques, be it in, uh, in radio or in television, because there are always, always jobs needed for producers, directors, etc. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, everybody wants to be a commentator, but not everybody can be. But it's not unusual for people to make that crossover from the production side of the sport into, into the broadcast side. So, you know, I'd advise any youngster wanting to do it to go about it that way. And also to use the contacts you make. It's so important well, it's in, in many walks of life, but I think particularly in journalism, in sport, in commentary, you know, it's not always a question of what you know, it's who you know. And to be in the right place at the right time and take the advantages, advantages that may come your way. Oh, okay, I have to bear that in mind then, because Mark Costello, he was telling the same thing about university, how nowadays it is quite important. So we just move back to you. Um, you commentated on TV and you've also commentated on the radio. What have you noticed a difference about being a commentator live on TV and then just commentating on the radio, where I guess you just describe it a lot more? Well, when you're commentating on the radio, you're effectively broadcasting to a blind man. You know, you have to paint the picture and you have to put every piece of detail into it. Whereas on television, people more often than not are able to see the details. So it's more a question of interpreting rather than describing. So, you know, I mean, whereas on the radio, if you're commentating uh, on, on, on a boxing match, you might say left jab, right cross, uppercut, leans on, steps away to the right, lands another left hook to the body. On television, you can't do that because the person watching can see that. So, you know, that's, that's the essential difference. And there's nothing more irritating than hearing people do radio style commentate, commentaries on television. Some are guilty of that and it sounds appalling. Which do you prefer doing out the two on the radio or on TV then? Uh, totally. I mean, it's like saying, do you prefer swimming to running? You know, I mean, they're, they're, they're both forms of exercise, but it's a it's a very different skill. I had some great times commentating on radio. I loved it. So I did it for many years on athletics and on boxing. But, you know, I made the move into TV about uh, 15, 20 years ago. And uh, and and I've thoroughly enjoyed the, the television world as well. You know, I get a great kick out of both. Okay, I understand that then. And so nowadays, kind of working alongside the BT sport team, alongside the boxing, and when you're a commentator, how much kind of preparation do you have to do in advance for each show, or notes and statistics and facts like that? Well, you kind of do it all the time. You know, you're aware of what's going on and you watch the press conferences and, uh, yeah, I'm not a slave to social media, but I do take a look at it. So, you know, I hear uh, Tyson Fury's uh, <laughs> utterances, which can be very amusing. Uh, but, yeah, you know, you watch all that. 
and of course you do you do make notes for every fight you work on and you, but but the again a mistake is to get too bogged down in your notes so you you're reading pre pre-prepared lines rather than watching what's actually going on in a boxing ring or an athletics track or a football field or whatever you know i mean i think it's a, a bit of a modern phenomena that people have got bogged down by statistics maybe that's a product Maybe that's a product of the internet, I'm not sure. But uh, I think the most important thing is to, in radio terms, describe what's going on in front of you in television terms, you know, interpret what's going on in front of you. There's no point reading notes if somebody's getting knocked out. Yeah, I can see what you mean. I think the viewer would find that especially annoying. I always see on Twitter, because Twitter's where people like share their thoughts. You know, people always state that. If, even if you make one little mistake from commentary or the judge or something like that. They get ripped apart on Twitter. And if you're part of the BT sport team, do you get a free BT subscription then? Well, I'm not allowed to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you guess. Oh, I hope so then. Um, so let's just talk about the fight that happened on the weekend between Annie Josh and Alexander Usyk. Was it a shock you was it a shock to you at all that Usyk won? No, it, it shocked me that he won quite as easily as he did. I always thought that if it went the distance that Usyk was going to be the likely winner because, you know, he's got such good boxing skills. What did surprise me was that AJ wasn't able to find a way to make it his fight. He wasn't able to fight as a big man and use his physical gifts. And he didn't sort of establish any sort of physical superiority in the early stages. And then when it got down the stretch, you know, Usyk won everything in the, in the closing stages of the fight. And AJ came very close to getting knocked out in that last round. And did you see they rang the bell a bit early? Did you see on Twitter at all? They ran about six seconds early. Well, I saw I saw it on... Uh, I was watching on... I saw uh, a feed of it, uh, a video of the American broadcast. And, uh, yeah, it was clearly that, clear that it, it, came, uh, it came too soon, which uh, it's obviously did AJ a big favour, didn't it? Yeah, they might have done that. Um, and just one thing as well, Eddie Hearn obviously saying that they're going to ex- exercise their rematch clause... Do you see the rematch it going any different at all? Um, well, you never say never because it's heavyweight heavyweight boxing, but you know, Usyk won this fight so comprehensively, it's going to take a very big change in strategy for Joshua to come out the winner. You know, he's got to find a way to get his big punches off and let his fists go and establish his jab, because if he doesn't, then we're going to see the same again. I know, I certainly will. I remember after the first few rounds, I was watching it. And my dad, my dad doesn't really watch boxing. He was like, since Andy Joshua, I watch it. And he was like, Fred, what's going on here? Because uh, UC just clearly outboxing him. Um, I only have one more question. I don't too much of time up today. But what advice would you give to anyone wanting to pursue commentating or interviews or anything like that in the kind of media world? Well, you know, it's the it's the best job in the world. It's great, great fun. Uh, and I've had a fantastic life for many years, travelling around the world to big events, to big fights. And, you know, I'm off to Las Vegas to do Tyson Fury, and I'll be heading out there next week for his fight against Deontay Wilder. You know, don't lose sight of your dream. Just believe it can happen. It's very easy to... It would be very easy to get frustrated and to think, oh, I can't do it, that this that doors are closed, but there are opportunities out there and just keep, keep your, keep sight of what you really want to do. And when you get an opportunity, don't sort of think about, oh, can I do it? Can I not do it? Do it and then work out how you're going to do it. Oh, okay. That's perfect. That's totally advice there, John. All right. Thanks so much for your time today. I do really appreciate it. Next week when you're in Las Vegas, I'll be still at college doing some living homework and some schoolwork but thanks ever so much for your time again john thank you i really appreciate it all the best you take care awesome thanks john